do it. <laughs> I was going to film rocking up to your place for a brew. But no. Do you want to get a brew? Yeah, sure. Let's get a brew. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Tristan Take Video. I could talk with saying that every time. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are debriefing with Ben about the Tour de France. The last vlog with Ben was the one that seemed to go really well and was pre Tour de France. Pre Tour training, de France. Training roll. You rolled around the Tour de France, then we had a nice dinner and then we had a nice lunch in Paris, and then Ben had a week off. Today we're going to talk through the experience of a first Tour de France mm -hmm. and everything that that entailed. As everyone knows, the first week of the Tour de France was a, a serious stress fest. How was it for you? Pretty awful, actually. I, I completely kind of forget the first day, bar the crashes. But it's funny, there's actually a couple of good moments where after I crashed, I was next to this uh, this guy, Clement Russo. I was like, mate, my arm was super sore. How is it? Blood, like blood everywhere, bleeding. And he's like, you, sh you should go to the doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Straight away. First thing he says. And then. Uh, Durba, Luke Durbridge passes me. He's like, come on, Ben, out. hop on a wheel. He's riding it. Nothing for me, like 300 watts. I, can be, I can't even hold the wheel. So <laughs> This is day one. Like, Just day one. Day one of 21. I'm like, race over, but luckily it wasn't. So just to give everyone, like, bring everyone up to speed. If you don't know what happened to Ben, so that first day, Ale Opi Omi woman yeah. with the cardboard, she took out half the peloton. And Ben was caught up in that. So it was that first crash you were caught yeah, up in. Yeah, the second one, luckily, I was at the back. And actually just before then, I'd spoken to Caleb Ewan. He was like, are you right, mate? I was like, no. And he's like, well, well, it's easy for me to say, but you just try for the finish. I was like, man, I think my arm's broken. He's like, no, no, just, just give it a go. See, maybe it'll turn out okay. I then tried to get to the front. That massive crash. I was on the left, missed it. Spoke to him the next day. He's like, thank fuck you're okay because I was thinking after I saw that crash, did I just kill that boy? Can I just <laughs> send him to the grave? So that was day, literally day just day one. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the first day you made it round okay you were a bit injured and the team said to you the team said gc is not over you're going to try every day and uh you're going to go for the breakaways in the second week that's where you're going to gain time on gc so tell us you you had eight stitches in your arm yeah eight stitches you're rolling no bruise, around shoulder but it got better it was a bit rough with the rain jackets but I guess you'd say next crucial point was the first stage in the alps which everyone kind of forgets but it was raining a lot the break took like an hour and a half to go. This was stage eight. Eight, stage eight. And then Pogacar took the piss and pretty much that whole climb then, I was with the GC favorites, kind of just getting dropped, then coming back, getting dropped, then coming back. It was one of those classic me kind of days where I'm just holding on and fighting. But that day is actually quite important because I didn't lose any time. So then tell us, like, that was the first big mountain day. That was the moment where you sort of went, yeah, look, I'm climbing with the best guys in the world here. So did that give you confidence for the next day? Yeah, it's like, it just meant that I could still do GC and I could come back. I just didn't know when I'd be able to come back. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know as well, Ben originally went to the tour as a kind of loose GC guy. And if the GC didn't work out in the first week and a half, week, yeah. You're gonna focus on stages. So then we got to talk through the next day, stage nine, the day you won, which we could speak about at length, I guess. Yeah, it's just a, a madness day. The Alps are not normally that bad in in summer. The way it was raced as well, with like the breakaway with Mike Woods and Nara Quintana and Wild Pools, it was pretty full on all day. Not like any other breakaway I've been in before. Just like riding, pretty much threshold and plus. 
every single climb. No like looking at each other. Oh, you, you, you're pulling soft, I'm gonna pull soft. It was just mano a mano. So just full. it made it pretty epic and to end up having a win is a bit silly, but I'm uh, a bit blessed and lucky. Tell us about that moment when you were trying to put the gloves on. Uh, up rose along. Rose so along. I was like, Rose <laughs> Yeah, I just couldn't get, I just, I, it was a bad glove choice from the car. And then I was kind of having to go at them because I was like, just give me, give me warm gloves. And how cold was it? It was about seven degrees or six degrees, very wet. It was super cold up there. And normally I never suffer from the cold, ever. But like, oh, I was, it got to my bones. So pretty much did a shit job descending, got dropped, pretty sad. I was a bit embarrassed there. Lost about 30 seconds. And I was like, I've lost. That's me, that's the race gone. I've, I've just lost the race because I can't descend. Got to the bottom. I was like, I'm just gonna go TT full to warm up and maybe I can catch them because I could just see them. Then I heard the gap was like, okay, 25, 20. I was like, yeah, all right, I'm still on. Eventually got back to them and the car's like, sit behind them. They're trying to, they're trying to flick you. But I wanted to keep riding for, because I had eight minutes. For the GC, I was like, this is a big climb, I need to Yeah, this stage, the did, you, advantage. did you know you were in the virtual yellow? Well, I mean, I kind of, you could do the math. Yeah. But that wasn't really the, the thought. Okay. I thought they could take eight minutes on me on the climb, and I wouldn't be able to win the stage. So when you went to the front, they were saying, they were like, why would Ben go to the front when Igita's got a, a quicker kick on him at the finish? But were you sort of like, no, I'm confident I'll, I'll ride him off my wheel, or? Yeah, I mean, like, there's 15... 17 k's of climbing. I mean like well, actually there's more, it's 20. Yeah. And you can't think about the finish until you get close to the finish line. You shouldn't think about the sprint finish until you know it's going to be a sprint. Yeah. First thing was to drop him. Well actually I thought he was bluffing. He was pulling super soft. I was like oh shit, he's flicking me. Because obviously Naira had been dropped by then. Yeah. I was like oh I'm just going to get flicked by him but I'm just going to push a bit harder. See if he holds on. And I didn't even know he was dropped. I didn't so you didn't know he was gone? No, I had no idea. But that climb Honestly. as well, like he weighs probably 10 kilos less than you. Yeah. And that climb at that stage, it's like three, four percent. It suits your well, weight actually, so more, much more. more. Like five, six, the whole, the oh, whole okay. bottom section. Yeah, it's way, it's, it's harder. Oh, you okay. down the car, it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah, it's around five, six percent. Okay. If you're pushing 430, you start to push behind. So he was having to work behind you. Yeah, sure. So you dropped him and then you just... TT to the finish. TT to the finish. Trying not to get out the saddle because I was like, if I cramp, my race is over. Yeah. And that's all I was worried about. Nothing else. I was just like, if I cramp, I'm screwed. So don't get out the saddle. stage nine you finished and I mean the experience of winning a Tour de France stage like we sort of discussed it but I mean the experience is always going to be so much more intense tell us about like the emotions of that and then following on what was that sort of experience like you know the hardest point was actually a couple of k's before the finish because I, I was kind of pretty sure I was going to win and you have this like this wave that kind of hits you it's almost I don't know if, if anyone has asthma it's that feeling where your lungs start to panic you're like that was probably the hardest moment. When you cross the line, it's then like joy and raw emotion and shock. It was actually just shock, actually. Yeah, a lot of shock. Um, and then afterwards, it just made you feel super proud when Pocket Shark came up to you and was like, chapeau, mate. And yeah, just speaking to everyone, seeing my team boss, Vincent, like crying, giving me a hug, giving me a big sloppy kiss, <laughs> a little bit of everything. So that was great. And see how happy everyone was. I found it really special. and something that you would never forget and then like we were just talking before tell us about like you've obviously received messages from absolutely everyone you've now done like podcasts you've had so many interviews your family's been called in australia and you were all over the national news i mean like this is your second appearance in one month on the tristan take video youtube channel lucky man <laughs> how does the reality of that hit you does it hit you or do you kind of absorb it or what was that transition like from Ben O'Connor cyclist, who was very good, to now Tour de France stage winner and fourth overall. I was saying to you just before, 
it's kind of you reflect on it in so many ways to so many different people whether it's my fiance's parents to you to another journalist to like a podcast where I kind of know the bloke you kind of reflect a lot and there's only so much shock you can you can think about when I was talking about this actually earlier just privately with Tristan we we're going down this descent just freewheeling in the sun and all of a sudden I had, had again that like wave of oh my god that's that's actually what happened like how did that happen for and obviously then you have the stage win so it's you don't really know what to celebrate more <laughs> yeah there's a lot of small victories there yeah, hey. yeah so I mean the reality of all of that was obviously incredible and it's something that takes a long time to process but you've got to keep racing so then let's talk about probably the next pivotal stage which was say Von 2 mm. tell us about the Von 2 day actually I'll just be honest I felt amazing all day until about 500 meters before I was dropped and then I realized I was in trouble as they would say man got hot got very hot when we were doing for example the Tristan Tech video we did in Andorra she was definitely no more than 20 degrees yeah it was cool that day probably 10 10 degrees at the top so I've been riding in cool weather for a long long time the Tour de France was cool the Alps were freezing and I got to Von 2 and I just like blew so it was the heat that, yeah the it was heat a, that did the damage it wasn't the pace the pace wasn't silly on the climb I just I was just cooked I was just way too hot funny how quickly it happens hey it's almost like this yeah and yeah it was a bit of a grovel after that I was able to get over the top just descend as quickly as I can and then finish so I was pretty glad to have that over okay so that was Von 2 and then the next pivotal stage was probably into Andorra you'd done it many many times before we obviously rode that descent well that climb and that descent of Bechelis in the last one last video but you had done it a lot in training my fiance my friends were all at the bottom of Bechelis I saw them I was looking for them it was really cool actually it's like serious business and all of a sudden you see them on the side of the road you're like oh just we're just like a parade actually we're just yeah. just rolling through <laughs> and for a little bit of a spectacle Jonas Vingegaard had attacked and then Carapaz attacked and then did you attack at some point I did I went twice because I was getting dropped so I was like it flattens out here I'm gonna get a gap so that I don't get dropped again so you're like as, they can come back as, to me as yes yeah pretty much or well, they catch me and then I've got more of a more of a sliding sleeway. Yeah. That was a theory. It's probably a shit theory, to be honest. It worked. I thought it kind of half worked. Yeah. Got and then dropped, you got tailed off over the top. Got dropped to the top. I'm sure the car was like, for fuck's sake. He's attacking. <laughs> I, I copped a lot of shit for that. Yeah. They're like, control your emotions. It's hard when your yeah, heart rate's 199. <laughs> I was getting dropped anyway, so. Yeah. Didn't really matter. Anyway. And then you took the KOM on the descent. Got the KOM on the descent. The next day, set came to me. He's like, man. I thought I went down a decent fast. Yeah, I thought for sure I got the KOM. He's like, but you got it. <laughs> you got it by what, 15 seconds or Actually, something I don't ridiculous? Know how much it was, but Mate, it was something insane. I, was, uh, I live just there. I do it so much. We did it on our last video saying it's one of my favorite climbs in Andorra. You so know that descent well. I do it a lot. I like it. Thank God I do it a lot, actually. That bloke. <laughs> Is that hot up there? Hello. Last climbing stage before the TT. So you're up to fifth on GC and Rigo was still in the top five. Yeah, that's right. At that stage. So that last stage you did Tourmalet and then up to Luzardiden. And how was that stage? Yeah, I mean, actually I felt really shit all day. The day before on Col de Portet was probably the best day I felt bar the stage win for the Tour de France. And then Luzardiden, I felt shit all day. We'd started Tormway. I was like, oh God, I'm like, not good. Then we started like the real steep hard section for Tormway. And I was like, oh, I'm okay. Interesting. And Ollie Narsen was sitting next to me actually until like two Ks to go up the top. He got so close, the big, the big man. So pretty much, it was actually pretty motivating having him next to me and it felt good. So I, I kind of knew I'd be fine. And then Ineos set this tempo on Luzardiden and from there you just have to finish with Wilco but like 
I'm not going to get dropped today. And Rigo had been dropped by this stage. Oh, yeah, that's right. Rigo got dropped. So you're up to fourth, virtual fourth at this stage. Yeah, and then... Uh, so you just stayed with Wilco. Yeah, exactly. To the top. He, he even came up to me. He's like, Rigo's dropped. I was like, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of that. It's huge. I don't really know what else to say. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was on to the TT. Yeah. Fancy shoes. Who makes those ones? Can you say? No. No. Apparently not. You can guess if you want. <laughs> yeah, have a guess at what they are. Yeah, you know what? They're no bonds though. <laughs> Alright, so tell us, we're up to the TT. You were fourth overall at this stage, and I remember watching an interview with you, and you were like, fourth or fifth, it doesn't really matter <laughs> before the TT. So you're pretty relaxed going into it. What did you what did you feel? I think that was a bit of bullshit to be honest. I think it does actually matter. I think I was just trying to kid myself. Trying to play Keep cool. it calm and cool because otherwise I didn't want to stress for it. But it really is actually just a simple thing. It was like a TT against Wilco Kelderman pretty yeah. much. So that was all you were focused on was Wilco. Yeah, exactly. Actually I started out the TT really well. Um mm. But then I faded so hard and I was just like, kind of not panicking for the second time gap. But I was like, if I'm down, I'm, I think I'm pretty screwed. <laughs> then I heard I was on the same time as, as Wilco. And I, I thought the team car was actually lying to me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, just to, <laughs> to like, give you false confidence like, I'm, I'm, or whatever. I'm fading so hard. I think, uh, I think I've lost more time than that. Yeah. So then we had this like kind of downhill section. I was trying to like, not freewheel, but not pedal as much just to and just try and keep speed i was just well, on just the trying limit. to like keep, i was just on the limit the whole bit. time i was completely cooked the day before i was also fried and tired and i was pretty not over the tour de france but i was pretty much over just like racing it was been so hard and stressful i was pretty ready to stop so, so that final five k's you're just thinking like there's only five k's left of the tour de france so like just go all in yeah. you're just groveling groveling and it was okay in the end but but your power and your speed was good in the end. No, I don't think the power definitely was so far off. <laughs> oh, like, was it? I was what meant did you to. Do? I was meant to sit at 400 pretty much for the TT. I started out at that, and then roughly it just goes down to like yeah. 360-ish, and then kind of just whatever you can hold. That was about it. Fuck. Like, just get was, around. There was then no limit, no looking at a number. It was just that's now can. the limit. That's now what I can push. And you held it. Just nice. So that was the final TT. Talk us through the Champs Elysees. This is one of, if not the most kind of iconic stages in bike racing. I think the start was actually super beautiful. You're going through these uh, suburbs, with these leaf leafy streets, and all the families from around those areas are just like out on the side of the road, and so many people. And you're going past Versailles, and all like, you know, Parisian grandeur, and then eventually you start getting you know, to get into town. And then the race becomes actually a race. You have to concentrate super hard. Go into Champs Elysees. You see the Arc de Triomphe with this massive French flag. Yeah, tell us emotionally it. how did and that, that feel? And that was just, as I said, what's, it's the grandeur. It's the size of the Tour de France. It's what it feels like. It's this otherworldly kind of big thing. That I found really special. The second lap is where the fighter jets come over. Yeah. With the French flag, and that was uh, oh, that gives you like goosebumps. You see them coming. And like you're obviously concentrating on the race and everyone's actually watching the, the fighter jet whilst kind of watching the wheel as well. That, that's an amazing, amazing, amazing moment. And then the race really starts, I think. Uh, you got attacks and every lap there was an attack. And actually before the race, we were very like serious. The whole team was like, you have to be with Ben the whole time. He cannot be by himself. So pretty much I was chaperoning once again for the final lap. <laughs> and that must feel pretty incredible. I mean, like, you're riding with Greg Van Avermaet and, like... Yeah. Greg, Ollie, Ollie. Nicky Shard, Benoit, Aurelien, Dorian, they were all next to me the whole time. Yeah. And Dorian especially, because he's like, if you get a puncture, we'll change the bike, and you're taking his bike. It was super cool, actually, because you had, like, squad just following you and, and helping you, and, and you do the final lap, and you're like, ah, oh, thank, thank God, final lap. 
you get to the 3k mark because it's normal race rules hey so if you puncture outside you're still screwed so and you I can still lose the race i didn't have a big time gap either it's still only 10 or 12 seconds so you cross the line like tell us the emotion of that you've watched the tour de france for so many years and then you've raced it for three weeks and then you've had all the sort of ups and downs that you've had i think the first thing you want to do is just hug all your teammates i was actually next to mickey shah pretty much the whole day and he was the one who, who i was like bodyguard with the whole race so pretty much i just gave you a few targets across the line and all of us are in this big circle and everyone just smiles and there's some great great photos and then you're like yeah, you've got to get the photo on the shine to lisa with the sunset with the view such a sick moment actually as we all line up and then i had this cool moment where i just like rode up the shine to lisa a little myself and there's this huge crowd like thousands of people and they, they, they're all cheering your name everyone's cheering bad 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 and then it's like a back in the day thing where you're like come on and they're all like yes <laughs> <G'd him> up. <laughs> so everyone's yelling your name and you're just lapping it up uh, it was hilarious it's just fun you know like they're enjoying it i'm enjoying it yeah i was able to find uh, my fiance my parents in the in one of the tents uh, i could like saw them waving gave them all a big hug we had photos and then yeah, i saw you had a photo had a chat went to the bus had some more champagne and yeah had a bit of a crew yeah that was that was paris was a funny pretty stage. So that is that. That is the recap of the Tour de France with Ben O'Connor. <clears throat> Very nice little cruise around. Just did like 80Ks, three hours. So you finished the Tour de France and then you had a nice bit of time off. Yeah, I mean, actually after the tour, we had some days in Paris, eating, drinking, super, super nice. Came back here actually to, to Girona because it's where the car was parked. Then went back through France for like two weeks or a week and a half. Staying in these little French towns, drinking way too much wine, learning more about wine and uh, just being pretty much off radar, which was uh, a treat after being like kind of on radar since Romandy and Dauphiné. And it's been non-stop, so I had a hell of a trip and um, that's why today, as Tristan said, it was super cruisy as the doctor ordered, doing pretty much nothing and just relaxing. And, being in some warmer, sunshiny kind of weather. Many watts. No, that's what makes you happy that's sometimes. And yeah, yeah, pretty much I haven't got heaps of racing to do. I think my next thing is Lombardia. I think it's two months, two and a bit months until Lombardia. So heaps of time. A bit yeah, man, it's like 64 days, I think. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, that's so we got why many more yeah, cruises. <laughs> a couple weeks worth. Yeah, yeah, sick. So it's kind of nice. We were also to let you guys know we're going to do a little trip through France. That'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks, I think. We did one last year actually, but it was way too hard. Yeah, actually, we once again, a much easier <laughs> parachute. Much, out. much easier route. <laughs> much less climbing. Much less kilometers. Yeah, much more enjoyment. Yes. Yeah. For the moment, it's home time. Gonna go and have some lunch. Thanks so much for joining, and I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, you can like and subscribe and uh, hit this video up. Yeah, we'll see you all in the next episode of Tristan's Video soon. See you later. All right, ciao guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.